You know, sometimes we're in houses where there's chaos or we have friends where it's chaos and confusion and we just complain and moan and cry about what's going on. But God just showed me that you got power to say quiet. Quiet. You got power to say I command tranquility right now. Even if we don't remove you from the situation, tranquility, you can speak over your mind and people are wondering how can you smile in the midst of chaos because I spoke tranquility. Yes. It means calm, restfulness, freedom, or the cessation of war of vi or violence. Yes. And so the same storms in our own lives can come from various sources too. Sometimes we create our own storms. Amen. Sometimes God sends a storm. And sometimes the devil is on a mission Amen. sending a storm. But at Amen. the end of the day, if we learn to trust and lean on Jesus Christ, we can make it through every storm no matter how it came. Amen? Amen. 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 We do things sometimes to get ourselves in a storm. And if you don't believe me, you think I'm picking on you, ask Jonah. Come on. Jonah got himself in a storm because he said no. Oh, yeah. Thought he was going to run. Got in a boat and the boat was in, caught in the middle of a storm. Yeah. The storm was so bad he even told him, just throw me over, boy. Y'all be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes God sends this storm because he's trying to tell us something. He's yeah. trying to teach us something. Coming to Christ just doesn't just mean we're going to heaven but we become his disciples we become the 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 way he's going to speak to the world this he we become the way the world is going to see him and so there's something that has to be done in us there's an experience we have to have with him there's a knowledge that we have to gain in him there has to be a way that we can stand in the midst of the storm yeah. and people can see god amen hallelujah, hallelujah. i was uh talking to someone and they were talking about first ladies and how some first ladies have the mindset and uh, people are anxious to be a first lady because they think it's all about sitting on the front row wearing a hat wearing nice clothes oh, no. being catered to and pampered but girlfriend you gonna go through some yeah. things there's gonna be some storms you got to experience because god is molding you and making you to make you the vessel that will be able to minister to that woman that is hurt yeah. that will be able to to tell that person that's been raped it will be alright. If you ain't been through nothing, how can you tell somebody something? If you haven't experienced anything, how can you comfort someone? So sometimes we've got to go through something in order for God to get out of what he's going to do in us. I know it hurts and sometimes we don't like to go through it, but our going through is going to be the way, the vessel, the avenue in which God uses us. You know, sometimes even Joyce Meyer was molested and, and went through so much as a child and yeah. going through that, I know she never imagined that in her going through that, God would use her as a vessel, yeah. put her on a platform to minister to broken and hurt women Come to on. bring healing to women that have experienced the oh, same yeah. thing oh, but yeah. how could she do that if she never experienced yeah. what she did but the thing I like about that, that in her going through that, to give her a testimony God is the balm of Gilead, so he is able to heal her of every brokenness, every scar, every pain she had to endure in order to be the vessel that she would be to use to spread the gospel. Hallelujah. And then there are times when Satan shows up, his little ugly self, and he's sending these storms, and he's whipping the storms, and he's whipping things at us, thinking that he can break us. As Job, he sent storm to Job. He said, I can break him. I can make him raise his fist yeah, at you. I right. can make him turn his back at yeah, you. Yeah. But God says, you can do what you want, but you can't touch his soul. Touch and so the Bible God. says, Job said, "Is it? Oh, and should I only receive the good of God and not the bad? I will still bless the name of the Lord. And the Bible says because he was able to stand and endure every storm he went through, at the end, he received double than what he had in the beginning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And thank God, even though Satan comes at us, he only has limited power. There's only so much he can do to us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so they're on this 
in this ship and they're facing this storm and they see this danger and they're wondering how can Jesus be asleep when all this danger is all about them and so doubt sets in amen I guess I may be the only one that has doubted God and wondered where could God be see I knew you didn't love me either God because if you love me you wouldn't be asleep while I'm going through what I'm going through they said they went and they awakened him they shook him amen and they said master why are, why are you sleeping? Don't you care that we're about to perish? Yeah. Don't you care that we're going through? I may be the only one to ask God, don't you care yeah. about what I'm dealing with? Yeah. Don't you care that I can't get out of this? Don't you care I can't figure out this answer? Don't you care that I feel like I'm about to drown? I'm reminded in the book of Isaiah, I want to say maybe around the 43rd chapter, the Lord God told his the children of Israel, he says, though you're going to have to go through water, the water shall not overcome you. Though you're going to go through some fire, the fire shall not send you. But we get all worked up that we got to go through, that we can't focus on the fact that we're coming out. Not just coming out, but we're coming out unsinged, untouched, undrowned. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And so they accuse the Lord of not caring about what they were facing. And they were, why are, they were doubting. Why this doubt? After they've seen him cast out devils. They've seen him feed the hungry. They've seen him do all these miraculous things. And a lot of times when we're facing these storms, we look at the situation and not at the Savior. Right. They were looking at the situation and not looking at who Jesus was. We're looking at the situation and not who we serve. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first and the last. I am counselor. I am wonderful. I am the Prince of Peace. I am your Rose of Sharon. So why are you looking at what you're going through and not focusing on who I am? Who cares what your boss said? I made your boss. I have control over your boss. Why are you worried about your bank account? I am the one that made the trees that makes the money. Yeah. Why are you concerned about all these things yeah. and you're doubting who I am? Oh, Hallelujah. Man. Glory. And so as I was reading, I said, oh God, this mindset Thank you, and this heart set, mm -hmm. because it's a heart thing too, it makes the storm appear worse than what it really is. I'm reminded of many times talking to Bishop and I'm painting this picture and I'm wanting him to agree and understand and, and I, I'm wanting him to be worried with me. I'm wanting him to be anxious with me and he's looking at me saying and why are you not worried that the mortgage is six months behind? And, and, <laughs> and so I learned that it's a mindset and a heart set that we get caught in that we're looking at things and they're appearing to be worse than what they really are. Yeah. And it causes us to fear and doubt God. Yeah. How many know fear and doubt and intimidation are family members and they yeah. like to yeah. hang together right. and they yeah. like to hang around our heart and they yeah. like to hang around our mind and they like to make things seem worse than what they really are yeah. and they like to make things appear bigger than they really yeah. are yeah. and they like to make things sound worse than they really are. I'm quite sure the winds were blowing. They sounded worse than what it really was. Amen. The waves were coming and I'm quite sure that their eyes, or they appeared to be worse than what they really were. Fear, doubt, and intimidation like to hang around. Amen. 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 I believe we're no different than the disciples. You know, a lot of times when we read the scriptures, we always say, if that was me or if I was there, if it was you and you were there, you'd be doing the same thing. Because guess what? You're doing it now. So if you're doing it now, what makes you think you wouldn't do it over 2,000 years ago? Amen. So they have been times when the storms are raging in your life and you question God's concern for you. And you, you might not have said it out loud, you know, because we know that's taboo. We shouldn't be thinking nothing like that. I would dare not say it out loud. But by ourselves in our secret corner with our secret thoughts, we've asked ourselves and we've wondered, don't you care about what is happening to me? Don't you care about what I'm experiencing? Don't you care how I'm being treated? Don't you care what I'm losing? All about me. I come to tell us all this morning, he does care. 
Thank you, Lord. He cares more than we could ever know. Amen. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, tells us that we have a high priest, that he's not so far from us, that he can't be touched with the infirmities that we go through. Amen. He can. He has felt everything that we felt. He's constantly interceding for you. Don't intercede for nobody that you don't care about. Amen. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Right. Come on, Pastor. Turn to Hebrews, the fourth chapter, somebody in the 15th and 16th verse. Have it say amen. We're gonna read this thing. Sister Shawna, I need somebody else that can read for me. Hebrews 4 15 and 16. Everybody have it? For we have not an high in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. 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 He does care for us, and he is doing something about our situation, even though you might not see it now. And a lot of times, because we don't see him working, we don't believe he's working. Yeah, that's Amen. Right, that's right. Amen. Because we don't see or know that's, the plan, right. we think there's no plan. Right. I can give a perfect example on a job. Sometimes when the supervisor doesn't tell us step by step what she's going to do and don't say nothing, in my mind, I'm going to speak for myself. When she don't send me help or tell me that she's going to send me help and I've told her I'm in need and she doesn't say anything, the first thing I say is, she don't care. Yeah. Yeah. What I don't know that she's in her office on the phone at her computer right. or whatever working it out yeah. to benefit me. Yeah. Because I don't see it yeah. don't mean it's not happening. Yeah. Because I wasn't at the meeting right. and told the ABCs yeah. of how I'm going to be taken care of doesn't mean that he's not working it out right. for me. Amen. 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 And so they say we are going to perish. Remember it was Jesus who had sent them on the sea in the first place a lot of times i'm learning we need to listen more to one another and listen to what people say and so he said jesus said to them let us go to the other yeah, side yeah. if they weren't going to make it to the other yeah, side yeah. then why would he say let yeah, us right. go to the come other on, side on, us man. meaning we are all going to get to the other, other side, side. hallelujah yes, right. hallelujah on this ship and the storms are way wailing and this is a storm they've never experienced and they're thinking about how they've given up everything yeah. they've given up their wives they've given up their livelihood they've given up their families to follow jesus everywhere he goes and to do what he wills them to do and now he has them in this storm and he has the nerve to be sleeping don't he care that we're going to perish Come we've on. given up everything and now we're going to perish yeah. they are afraid that jesus is going to let them Die. Come on, Pastor. David said in Psalms 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I, he didn't say I'm not going to fear no evil because I can handle it. I will fear no evil because he is with me. So here Jesus is on the boat with them, and they're fearing evil, and they have the great I am on the boat with them. Jesus did not save you to abandon you. Uh, Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's right. Say that one more time. On. Jesus did not save you to abandon That's you. Right. Yes, Sometimes we think that Jesus wants to play games with us and he's the master puppeteer and yeah. he's holding things over and he's putting Come us on. over fire. But no, he didn't Come save us to abandon us. Yeah. He says, I came to give you life. And life more oh, abundantly. abundantly. That means I came to give you eternal life. And then while you're here in this physical life, I'll give you abundance. Yeah. So he hasn't saved us to abandon us. I rebuke that thought we have in our mind right Amen. now. Hallelujah. There was a time I thought that. He's not going to abandon us when the things get tough. You know, we have family, we have friends, co-workers, associates, whatever you may want, friends, whatever you may want to call it. And sometimes when the going gets tough, get friend, 
Yeah. They get gone. Yeah. Friends yeah. ain't nowhere around. Yeah. But God yeah. says he'll never leave us, no forsake us. Even when things are tough, even when things are hard, yeah. we can depend on him to be there. He is committed to us. He will not forsake us. Amen. Amen. He will not leave us. He will not let us sink. He will not forsake us. He won't abandon us and leave us to fend for ourselves and to figure it out for ourselves. Why would he um, tell us to cast every care upon him if his plan was to forsake us and to leave us all by ourselves? He's not like man. He won't lie. He's not like man. He won't abandon us. He's not like man to tell us what we want to hear just to get something out of us. Hallelujah. Come on, bitch. Hallelujah. So when your storm is raging And when your boat is rocking and yes. reeling And when the adverse winds are blowing When the waves are crashing yes. Against your vessel Against your mind Against your heart Against your feelings Against your household Against your bank account Against your job He will not let you sink Amen. He will hold you up Thank And Jesus. never desert you Under any circumstances Thank Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. He's committed to us You know I like that thing Because we're always wondering If a person is really committed to us Amen. You know, people can talk a good game. Yeah. Come on. Yes. But I love it that I can trust him and rest assured that he is committed yeah. to me. Yeah. Even when I'm not committed to him, he never reneges on his commitment to me. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you can be in a relationship with someone and you can be truly committed, but the moment you find out that they're not committed, then you to take a decision, make a mindset to be not to commit either. But I love the Lord Jesus, that even when I renege on my part of the covenant agreement, he stays committed to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He has already promised us that everything is going to be all right. Yes, it is. Everything Amen. is going to be all right. He says he's going to take care of us. Amen. He's going to help us to weather Amen. the storm. He tells us, take your eyes off the storm and put your eyes on me. Amen. If we can recall when Peter began to walk on the water, as long as his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk on something that was unwalkable. But the moment he began to look at the circumstances and listen to the things around him, he began to sink. Amen. And so I come to tell us this morning that we don't have to be afraid of the storm that we're in. You need some of us are in storms right now. Some of us just came out of a storm and some of us are getting ready to go through a storm. So if you think I'm not talking to you, it may not be today. It could be tomorrow because we are in three different categories in a storm right now, coming out of a storm or getting ready to go through a storm. And we need to know that God cares for us, that he'll never leave us nor forsake us, that he has all power in his hand and he has control over over the storm so much that he can say a word. Peace be still. Hallelujah. We've got to understand who controls the storms. Hey man, he's the one that made the water. He's the one that made the land. He's the one that made the sky, the stars, the moon, the mountains. And if he made it all, why don't he have control of it all? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So here they discover after they shake him and wake him and doubt is set in and they're doubting that he loves them and he, they're doubting that he's going to see them through and they're going to die in the midst of this after giving themselves totally to him and forsaking everything. That's why some of us don't want to forsake. Is deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. But we're afraid that if once we make that commitment, he won't be committed to us. But he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you to the end of the earth. I shall not break my commitment. I shall be with you. You can cast every care on me. You can put every storm on me. You can trust me to be able to control and take charge of every storm. Sometimes I may not come when you want me, but I'm causing a process to take place in your life. I'm causing you to become unshakable in your faith. I'm causing you to be able to have unsurmountable trust in me that nobody can say anything about me to you and you won't be able to say that's a lie from the pits of hell. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory 
Nobody can tell you that God won't take care of you. You can say that's a lie from the pits of hell. The Lord told me I can cast every care upon him. They can say he'll leave you right in the middle of what you're going through. You can tell that's a lie from the pits of hell because David said, even though I may go through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't have to fear because God is with me. His rod and his staff comforts me. Hallelujah, Jesus. So here they discovered, as we have to discover, the power of the Lord. Amen. And I thank God for the things I've been through. Going through it, you don't thank God. You want to know how long and why you got to go through. Amen. But when you come through, you realize you had to go through it. You had Amen. to experience it. Right. I remember being a new babe in Christ, new in Christ. And one of the members of our church, one of the kids' godmother, dropped dead right in front of me. Oh Never saw nothing mm. like that. And my husband came. I called him. I said, get here now. She in the dead. Hung up the phone. <laughs> they didn't give no more details. I said, she dead. Come here. <laughs> Hung up the phone. And when he got there, everybody is crying and, and tears and, and wondering and saying, whoa, is, oh, my God, I can't believe this. And they're telling us that she won't live. She shall die. And here one voice is saying, I don't believe that report. I've seen God raise Amen. the dead. I know he's able to do it. And I had to have that experience so that I could know for myself Jesus. that God is able that he has all power over everything amen they told us that she was going to die in a few hours that's right, that's right. and we began to pray and seek the that's face right. of god and i was watching everyone else how they were praying and i was listening to them encouraging us pray don't don't listen to the doctor yeah. block out what the doctor right. is saying right. block out your medical right. experience right. open up your bible right. speak out loud right. what the bible says about healing and i took a step of faith and began to do what they said do and a few hours later they came back to us and the doctor was scratching his head and he said it doesn't look like she's going to die but she'll be a vegetable she won't know who she is where she is she won't be able to do anything for herself and I began to cry and well because I had not experienced anything like this and I was told to take your eye off the storm and put your eye on Jesus listen to the word of God. Ignore the naysayer. Ignore the doctor. Ignore your flesh. Ignore your emotion. Ignore your medical experience and begin to speak the word of God over the situation. I need somebody to say peace. 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 And so we began to pray even more and pray even more and fast and pray and fast and pray. And I'm here to tell you she, they transferred her from one hospital to the other. And once she got to the other hospital, as soon as she hit the grounds of the hospital, she coded. And she coded twice. And she coded during surgery. And they thought that she